All right. Welcome back to Wait Your Turn, everyone. I'm Jordan, and today we are looking at the new Nishian for New Sparta. Stick around. Today we are looking at the Nishian, and not only the newest version and iteration of his design, but we're going to go ahead and just run through where we've come from <laughs> and uh, go back to our roots. And so this um, this uh, skeletal horror is definitely not philosophizing. Um, you see this fiery maw, which I didn't realize till a long time after, but apparently it's supposedly a mouth. But then there's like a skull head inside, and like the skull head doesn't really have a neck. They always have a problem with that neck region. I don't I don't know what what's going on there. And then his his, his skin looks like a kind of looks like a um, kind of looks like a turd actually. It just looks like a bunch of turds attached to a skeleton that they've pressed into it. The sword is cool. The flaming sword is money. And then the small man down here, I don't know, never really understood why there's like a, why Goku's down there going Super Saiyan. But I also totally enjoyed these runes that are drawn onto his, uh, his sternum. And I suppose those are ribs, but they're kind of thick to be ribs, but they're beneath his, his uh, collarbone. But that is the original niche. niche. And that is where we came from. Let us move on to, to the second iteration and the attempt, which is the kneeling niche, as I call him. Um, he's uh, doing something with his fist that some people have called attention to and called into question, which has been kind of bizarre. Again, the flaming sword, very cool pose. Not really sure. They said that they're going for this ambrosia-like elephantine skin. There's probably a lore reason for that because the chimera is also derived from this ambrosia, black ambrosia liquid. And again, Goku's going Super Saiyan on his right shoulder. He's got an awesome skull pauldron on his uh, right right shoulder, which is really cool. I feel like they should have kept that actually. That was really intense. And I did like the helmet as well. I feel like they ditched the helmet because they couldn't really manage the skeletal features on the face underneath the helmet and really still stay within the constraints of PVC. It just didn't sound uh, as possible. However, the flaming sword is still stellar. He looks like he's squatting and like kind of Call of Duty teabagging this house down here, but um, that is the Nishian. He had some what? Did they show the back angle? There we go. He has flames coming off his uh, his helmet, going down his spine. They totally got rid of the flaming maw. Um, I don't know. It didn't really seem like he needed that furry, feathery pimp coat. And he has flames just kind of coming out from his back. It just looks like maybe he landed, like superhero Iron Man pose landed, and now there are flames like erupting from his crater, or it's just like I don't know. The, the sewage backed up, I don't know, something like that. But that is the second iteration of the Nishian kneeling as if beckoning you or kind of like resting and waiting for you to challenge him. It didn't, it kind of like feels like it was derived from Thanos a little bit, but still a little bit of a ways off. The skull is now moved to his shoulder. The flames are very much there. The elephantine, elephantine turd skin, kind of like weird, like morph suit still there. Look like kind of brain, like brain fluids. I don't know, I don't know, but that was the second one. Moving on to the third iteration, um, this is the kind of the smoke giant. It kind of looks like a smoke titan, you know, like a smoke elemental uh, balrog even. Ah, oh, maybe a balrog. That's probably even more appropriate. But here he is pointing with his sword. Definitely a good new take, kind of like charcoal-like skin in this case, more refined, more uh, focused and sculpted. This cloud smoke is astounding. I can't believe they whip out these these artistic masterpieces so quickly. And as you zoom in, it looks like there, it doesn't even look like there's actually a, a head there. Perhaps there's a skull in there. I mean, you still can't see his neck, um, but there he is pointing. There's some nice censorship happening there with the smoke. Smoke's coming off his calves. And again, there's not a Super Saiyan Goku, but instead a slightly glowing figure, the Nishian himself. So I'm not really sure the connection there, but apparently he's controlling the Nishian potentially telepathically without some sort of Titan pool. So he can control the Nishian. It's really cool. It's like a black shadow giant. Love the concept art. He looks kind of skinny. It's kind of weird how skinny and lithe he looks when I assume he's going to be like this bulky Spartan. But I don't know, never seen a Spartan in real life, so I'm not one to judge. The smoke sword, oh, so good. It looks like some sort of like ancient Vorpal blade. Um, doesn't look very balanced, uh, but he looks more than strong enough to be able to handle it with ease. So as a commander of the Spartans, I, I, I can believe it. I dig it. I don't really see any Spartan elements to him, um, but there are these kind of like crop circles running on him. So maybe those are Spartanic tattoos. I have no idea, but definitely 
in the right direction finally. They were like kind of going off this way and then they kind of corrected the course. And then our the miniature rendition or render of that concept art is here. It is very blobby in terms of smoke. You can see the faintest of forms of a visage or a facial structure being developed there. The sword is completely obscured. I mean, obviously they're gonna refine the blobs. I mean, it's not gonna be, or I mean, it could have been if it's like this ambrosia like leaking out of his of his body. Uh, again, they're, they're hitting the right nose with the musculature. He looks more bulky now, which is good. His thighs look killer. Those are great. Uh, his, his legs are still a little bloated and bubbly. Um, but everything's working in the right direction. And with Initian down below, kind of walking towards you without that glowing Super Saiyan aura, it just looks a lot more um, realistic. And I think realistic is always a good thing to go for. The knives in his back, I don't really understand that. How could someone have stabbed him in the back? And why hasn't anyone taken that out of their, their ruler? It must be hard sitting on a throne when you have swords coming out of you. But again, um, they have a skull in the background. Things are looking pretty good. Look, looking pretty good. And then finally, let us move on to the latest and hopefully last iteration before they refine it further, which is the flaming hot Cheeto, the Nishian himself. So here we have his skull head uh, basically engulfed in the flames. I almost feel like instead of just one skull, and because they're going for like several skulls in this smoke, they should just do like a, a basically an outpouring of skulls. I don't know, never mind. Maybe scratch that idea. But it looks pretty good with the skull head, you know, coming out there like that scream. He just looks crazy. He doesn't look like a Spartan, like, you know, a composed, calculating ruler, but he just looks like a frenzied, wrathful giant. And this actually looks very similar to the original Nishian where we had the flaming, uh, flaming uh, maw wrapped around its head. The smoke really does substitute for that, uh, that flaming maw a lot better. It's a lot more wavy and wispy. It looks like the concept art brought out the best of the flaming maw to a nice polished form. And who knows, that flame could form a flaming maw if so, so, uh, so needed uh, mechanically for the AI cards. Uh, it's been refined, the musculature looks great, looks very Spartan in form, that triangle shape. Still has some swords in his back, which I'm not I'm not upset about. It feels even more appropriate now as like some sort of barbaric berserker warlord. And they have this fun effect where they have skulls coming out of the smoke in his back. So I think that's actually going to be a really cool effect. Now that's more than one, it's like two or three uh, skulls wrapped in smoke kind of coming out of the art piece. So really, really fun stuff. It's actually kind of cool seeing their design process over time. I don't feel like they need to turn to the backers every single time they have like a design, you know, issue or question, but it is kind of fun for them to like engage the audience and say like, oh no, we don't know how it's gonna turn out. And then they like throw out some bomb piece. Um, I feel like a lot of their pieces do need to go through that complete design process before they show their backers. Cause it does look kind of wishy-washy. It does look like, oh, they, they don't even know what the main villain's gonna be like, and they don't have that, that grounding. But at the same time, I, I appreciate a, a first time creator showing us the design process itself. So sometimes you just don't see it. Like with technology, like uh, the MacBook or like Kingdom Death Monster, you just don't see all the cutting and the revisions and the, the drafts that go into a finished piece. And so this is kind of a unique perspective that we get to see as backers for Into the Unknown and Aeon Trespass Odyssey is to see how these miniatures emerge from this creative process, which I find very entertaining. So he looks even better than the concept art, actually. I, I feel like I agree with this, uh, with this miniature even more than the original art. So loving that, I love how they do listen to the backers and the sword is fully, uh, you can see it, but you can't see it, which is even crazier because it's just emerging out of the smoke and it's gonna come right at you. So loving the direction of, of their miniature design and the con uh, conceptual uh, formation of their distilled ingenuity. So really cool. Uh, they say we're getting there, all he needs now is a facelift. So couldn't agree more. I guess they could refine that, that skeletal form and they're just doing a good job and um, I, uh, I hope to see more being developed in the game itself, especially um, as they're releasing more into Tabletop Simulator. So that is really all I have to say. They're heading in the right direction, which is a relief. I was kind of like, oh no. Are they gonna really mess up the Nishian? Like one of their most iconic, potentially iconic characters. And it, it seems like they are, they've got their, they've gotten their footing. They're just kind of messing with us and just showing us a kind of a sneak peek into the 
background design. So I feel like the, the rest of the uh, design process might not be as interesting as the Nishian, so that's why they're showing us that part. So, But this is all speculation in my own thoughts. So. Again, if you haven't checked it out, we I O oh, we I I have released a print and play version of the Prologue Hecaton Battle. It's there on the channel. You can go ahead and search it up. Um, and I'm starting a new kind of mini season of Aeon Trespass Odyssey demo plays. So thanks to Chris Goodwin, uh, <laughs> praise Chris Goodwin. Uh, I have been able to print out my own print and play, and you'll be able to see that every Thursday at 1600 Pacific Standard Time on this channel, wait your turn, be there, be square. So, um, as always, huge shout out to my patrons. Thank you for supporting the channel, investing in me. And uh, huge shout out to our newest patrons, Chen, Hekaheth, and Richard. Thank you for joining the channel and just being a huge, huge support and uh, inspiration to me. Keep the dialogue flowing, keep the conversation coming. Put your comments down below what you think of the new Nishian. I mean, you've already commented on the uh, ATO homepage, but I mean, you can comment again and let me know, but I've probably already read your comments. Anyway, anyway, so um, if you have uh, if you haven't checked out my Patreon, it's down there. There's a link below. Um, for a buck every month, you get to join in our monthly patron-only live stream where we discuss design, Kickstarter, board games, and themes, and etc. And we're going to have a guest speaker either this month or the end of next month from Axis Mundi Games. So very exciting stuff. Um, as always... Thanks for watching everyone. If you're new to the channel, please remember to subscribe, hit that subscribe button, drop a like down below if you're a loyal subscriber. And as always, have a great day, have a great weekend. Thanks for watching, thanks for waiting, and now it's your turn. Mm -hmm.